This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. like to talk to people we like to talk to and uh, this person happens to be the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown hello Alex how are you Larry good uh, yesterday we uh, had a pretty big earthquake so <laughs> did you, waiting for the uh, oh, did, did, waiting for the aftershock did you have a big one really I didn't know that it was 4.5 I was in the garage when it happened and it's uh, it did. It lasted about eight seconds. So it was. Well, that's not. It, you know, uh, people don't know this about earthquakes, but it, it, the, to begin with, the Richter scale is a weird thing, where every tenth of a point you go up, it doubles or something. It go, it's, it's exponential. Yeah, it's huge. It's just. So if you have a four point five, it's it, 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 and then you get a six. A six is like exponentially, incredibly yeah, larger. Yeah. All right. And then it's the amount of time that it shakes. In other words, if it shakes for just eight seconds, you're not going to do much damage. If it shakes for 45 seconds, like I think the Loma Prieta quake was, it can loosen everything and things can fall down. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that? Am I correct about this? You're the you're probably better expert on it than I am. I don't know a lot about it, but yeah, there's the uh, Loma Prieta was. Was twenty seconds? I think. Was it twenty seconds? I thought it was forty-five. Uh, we could look. Well, you can ask Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's too complicated a question for her. But let's see here. Echo, how long was the Loma Prieta quake? Here's something I found on the web. Let me see. According to curb.com. Yeah. The Loma Prieta earthquake lasted 15 seconds. 15 seconds. The damage it caused reverberates today. Okay, 15 seconds. That was all. I thought it was 45, but okay. it hit like a crack. I mean, it was, you know, it was a monstrous, monstrous. Uh, well, there was a, in, uh, in 1964, there was a quake in Alaska that uh, lasted, it was a huge one, and it lasted eight minutes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, but there was in the, it was in the middle of nowhere, right? It was near uh, one of the big cities. It did destroy some things. Yeah, yeah. I think it was near Anchorage. Wow. So, oh, that's uh, that's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. What do you do? You can't dance around for eight minutes. I don't know what people were doing. Well, it's only it's only Alaska. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Have you ever worked Alaska? No, uh, the uh, the first road gig I ever worked was Sacramento, and this is how long ago it was. Bob Schimmel was the middle act, and he had just gotten back from Alaska, and he was just telling me how insanely wild it was. Well, what he what I got I got a call one night in San Francisco from Billy J, and I said, "Hi, Billy, what's doing?" He says, "Help me, I'm in Alaska." <laughs> and I went, well, what's wrong? He said, I'm going on. I'm going on at midnight. And the sun's still out. He said, yeah. I can't do comedy when the sun is out. <laughs> I said, how much sun is there going to be? And he said, uh, I think something like uh, only about two hours worth today. So... And, and then I had a girlfriend who was born in Alaska and raised in Alaska and came down to the Bay Area, and her whole sidereal clock was thrown off. Because she, you Yeah, know, it's supposed to be, uh, it really messes you up if you go up there in the middle of that. 
Yeah. I mean, I saw she showed me a video she made with her friends. You know, kids get together and they play with the video camera and so on. And there's a clock on the wall, and it says 10 o'clock. I said, you did this in the morning, right? No, she says, that's 10 o'clock at night. And out the window, the sun is shining. <laughs> now, imagine having to be raised that way and then come somewhere else. It's like it must take you years to adapt to a different light cycle. Oh, sure. They, uh, they play softball at 4 in the morning up there in the... At four in the morning? In the summer, yeah. Oh, my God. Four in the morning. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, well, yeah that, would, uh, that would throw your clock completely off. Yeah, yeah, that would throw your clock completely off. So, yeah, I, uh, uh, I uh, um, am, like, very um, happy to be here with normal sunlight. Except today in New York, right now, the temperature, looking at my watch, 93 degrees. And Ooh. humid. Okay. So, well, at least uh, New York seems like it's immune from earthquakes. Uh, uh, n- no, it's not. Do you know that we have a quake going right through Central Park? Uh, uh, a fault going right through Central Park. Really? Yes, wow. absolutely. Uh, it goes through Central Park, and in fact, we had a slight quake a few years ago. It's very, very minor, but. Uh, it could suddenly go crazy, and this town could be in a lot of trouble, you know. That would be big trouble, yes. And what's the largest fault in, the, the largest fault in America, the biggest fault in America? That would be the Madras Fault. Mm-hmm. And where is that? In the middle of Missouri. Yeah, that's exactly right. So everybody in Missouri, get your shots. No, uh, <laughs> I don't... I don't know what that has to do with shots, but anyway, uh, it, it it's the largest uh, it's the largest uh, fault in the country. It has not gone in years and years and years, but they're saying that it's been building up so long they're worried about it. Because the great thing about the little earthquakes, which San Francisco gets a lot of, I mean, you you get them constantly. Yeah, yeah. I would say you because I used to be out there and that was me. And uh, you, you get them constantly, and that's kind of a sigh of relief because it's the plates readjusting themselves. Whereas if you don't have one for a while, the big one can come. So, you know. How big was the... Uh, see, I asked him this, and, you know, uh, because he's, uh, he's like Rain Man. He has all these facts in his mind. <laughs> How big was the uh, 1906 earthquake, San Francisco 1906 earthquake? Well, they didn't have uh, the Richter scale then, but I think they've estimated to be close to an 8. Really? That much? Close to that, but they're just estimating. Yeah. Now, but here's the question. What damaged San Francisco? It was the fire. And the fire happened because... They did the pipes burst and uh, gas pipes, and they didn't have the ability today. To, I think the pipes they're using now are flexible, uh, so that if there's an earthquake, it, it just moves with the earth, right? But in those yeah. days, they didn't have that. They opened up, they caught fire, boom, and then the fire hit San Francisco, and uh, half the town burned down. You know, it was fun. Yeah, but there was an area of the town that wasn't hurt, right? I mean. Um, I think a lot of this I thought was... They, uh, I thought they did some dynamiting to set up a firewall, maybe near Van Ness. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And it prevented it from the fire from going further. Yeah. But what a disaster for San Francisco. I mean, imagine that. You know. Um, so there must have been people that just... Uh, <laughs> ran back to the Midwest after that happened here. Well, I don't know, you know. I mean... See, I always felt that we were, San Franciscans were a hardy breed, you know. We lived there knowing earthquakes would happen. And people say to me, how can you live where there are earthquakes? And then they're talking to me about the Midwest. Well, I say, how can you uh, live somewhere where there are tornadoes? Or how can you live somewhere where there's this or that? Every area of the country has its own kind of disastrous thing that can happen. And it just so happens that San Francisco and California earthquakes. 
which uh, for the most part, admit it. Okay, you had you had an earthquake yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. What was the first thing you said to me on the phone when we got on here with the interview? Hey, we had an earthquake yesterday. Yeah. It's something San Franciscans like to brag about. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and you're going to go around for the next couple of days. Did you feel the earthquake? Oh, yeah, I felt it. I was in Yeah. You know, it's kind of like um, a, a bragging rights that San Franciscans have. Yeah, I'm I'm really good at that, you know. I got I got an earthquake that really really tremored and I was there and did you feel it? Of course everybody else felt it as well, right? Of course, and this is where you get the worst radio ever. You turn on a KCBS after an earthquake, and they spend an hour, people calling in and telling, well, I was in Hayward, and a jar fell off my shelf. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It gets a, a, worse, bit, you know? a, a bit ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to sleep through earthquakes. You sleep through I think I've slept through a couple, yeah. Yeah, you know. I, I I maybe wake up for a second and go, what the fuck was that? Oh, well, maybe it was an earthquake. I go back to sleep. Uh, you know, uh, they ha- they happen all the time. Some of them are, are so small that you don't feel them. But I think after the Loma Prieta quake, there was something like three hundred aftershocks or something like that. I mean, oh, there was a lot, yeah. And some of them were big. I mean, some of them made me run for the door. You know. And my, my neighborhood, which was the marina, was completely in shambles. You know, they had to completely rebuild it. It's, but it's amazing. After about a year, they had rebuilt. So, uh, you know, we were back to back to normal. My favorite moment of the earthquake. You want me to tell you the favorite moment of the earthquake? This is I, I have a quote on my Facebook page that says, He used to be a big shot. It's a quote from... Uh, from the Roaring Twenties with Jimmy Cagney, and and I that's how I feel about my career. I used to be a big shot, <laughs> but when I used to be a big shot, I, I was uh, the earthquake happened right, and they sent mm-hmm. Dan Quayle to the marina. He was vice president, folks, of the United States at the time. For those of you who are young kids and don't know who I'm talking about, and he was pretty much a moron and an idiot, and he came to the marina and I went outside, I stood outside and he was down the street standing on a box giving kind of a press thing you know like, oh this is terrible what's happened here in San Francisco and blah 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 we're going to do everything we can to help the city and then he gets in a car and he starts driving and he drives past my apartment house and as he's driving past my apartment house what do you think somebody in the crowd yelled? He yelled. I think it was she. She yelled, Hey, look, Alex Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> As the vice president of the United States was driving by. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, that was a pathetic time for, for me. You know, I, I, I actually, I, that was, right after that, I moved to Florida for a couple of months. So while I was in Florida, they did all the major refurbishing and retooling of the apartment house so that it wouldn't, you know, fall fall to the ground the next time this happened. So I had somebody staying there, and they, they had to put up with really a lot of noise. And so I'm glad that I, you know, I don't, I never said I was glad for getting that job in Florida but in a way, I was glad to get that job in Florida because I didn't have to be there for all the repairs and everything. But when That's I came, all it was good for because Florida sounded like it was a nightmare. Mm. Um, Florida was an absolute nightmare for me. Uh, I I can't tell you how much disdain I have for that fucking town. Didn't you say there were people in the? station lineup that were actively working against you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the guy, a big guy on the air, he was a, a big star in Florida. In my mind, it, he goes, my, his name goes blank, but people in Florida would know who I was talking about if I had his name, and uh, he died a few years ago, uh, and he did everything he could because he was like the big star in, in Miami radio, Okay. So if he went on the air and said he liked something, people would go out and buy it or do it or whatever. And if he didn't like something, 
well, you were in trouble. And he didn't like me. And he started putting me down and going after me. And it made it impossible for me to gain any traction in that town because of what he was doing to me. One morning, he comes in to me and he says, you know, last night I couldn't sleep and my arm is hurting. I said, I, I go get a checkup. That could be a heart attack. And he went to the uh, hospital, and sure enough, he had had a heart attack. And he, he was still kind of going through it. So they hospitalized him, and they stabilized him, and they saved his life, and comes back to work, and he starts putting me down again. And I'm going, wow. what the fuck? I saved his life. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, and I'm being put down? This is terrible. You know, I wish I could remember his name. It's a simple name, and I, my mind's just, you know, I take this drug now called pregabalin, and it makes me forget everything. Like, who, who am I talking to now? Oh, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> no, but I just... He was, I, probably, he was probably threatened by you. I, why he was threatened, I have no idea, because he was the big star in Miami, you know? I mean, he, you don't get much bigger in radio than this guy got in radio in Miami. And really? yeah, yeah, I mean, he wound up, he was making a million dollars a year. Okay, so that's how big he was. And that's in, uh, when, when did I go there? When was the earthquake? Uh, 1996? 89, and 89. you moved in. Yeah. You were down there, you know. Yeah, and then I came back and worked in San Francisco. But uh, 89, uh, in 89 dollars, a million bucks is a lot of money to make in radio. I never made that kind of money. You know, I'd like to think I did, but I didn't. You know, so I don't know. I Miami was, but but as terrible as Miami was, it gave me the three months to leave for them to fix the apartment house, and I came back, and it was all done. Uh, so, uh, and then I got my job back. So that was amazing. Station fired. All worked out. Well, the station fired me, and then. Uh, I went to Florida and I came back and uh, uh, my business manager called the general manager there and said, there was a new general manager there. He said, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. And he said, yeah, I'd love to have Alex back. He says, we need him. The ratings have gone into the toilet and we need him. And so I came back uh, for what I was making before I left. And... Um, uh, I came back, and I guess it lasted there another five years or something. And it was, uh, you know, it was very successful, me coming back. The day I came back, the ratings went right back to where they were when I left. So, uh, but nevertheless, I had to go to Miami for a while to survive. And, um, but that was a horrible survival, just horrible. And then, then I had made a big mistake down there, too. My, my business manager came down and we looked for an apartment and he finally said oh this looks like a good one Coconut Grove you know well Coconut Grove is the big area in Miami right so uh, oh boy we just lost Larry hold on a second I'll call him back let's see if we can get him there we go you, you there yeah I cut off for a couple of seconds yeah I called you back but anyway I went uh, uh, where was I Oh yeah, we went Talk about down. Coconut, Coconut Grove. Yeah, we went down to Coconut Grove and we looked at this apartment. And he said, "Fine." So we, I move into the apartment in Coconut Grove. First Saturday night, I didn't realize Coconut Grove is the go-to spot for all the kids to have a good time. And I can't get my car out of the garage because the traffic is so slow and blocked up. Oh God! So I was. Fucked every Friday and Saturday night. I couldn't get out of my apartment. And the noise was incredible. So add that to the fact that I'm hating the radio station where I'm working, and I'm waking up every morning saying to myself, I swear to you, I used to say this to myself when I wake up, my eyes would open up and I go, oh fuck, I'm still in Miami. <laughs> you know, I, I always kind of wanted to believe it was a bad dream. And people don't understand that. They go, oh, Florida, we love Florida. Yeah, but you're Jewish and you kind of move there when you're old because it's the law. Okay? <laughs> but uh, 
We, we, we can keep going here. I don't care. Um, uh, where's the worst place you ever lived? You got to have a, or the worst job you ever had. Worst job I ever had was, uh, well, I had several clerical jobs. They're just, just they were just so boring. You know, that's why that's why I got into comedy. I couldn't take a day job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, but it, it, I did have a job yeah. where I worked at Candlestick Park when I first moved out here. I was like uh, really young, and uh, they they hired security guards at the ballpark at Candlestick. And, uh, that might, that's when I still could tolerate baseball, so that might be fun. And my job was uh, I'd stand out by the ticket booth and make I'd make sure people weren't scalping tickets. And people would come up, if they have extra tickets, they'd give them to me for some reason, so I ended up scalping them. So I was making money off what I was supposed to be stopping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, and and in comedy, I suppose you've worked some horrible clubs. You know. We've had hor- gold jobs. That's, I, I, that's what I wanted to ask you. you never, did you ever have a day job? I, well, I, you know, well, I mean, I consider that what I did working at a radio station a day job. I mean, it was a job. You know, I mean, I was employed. Um, but did I ever have? What was the question again? Uh, um, did I? Ever you never have, had a real. You never had a real eight-hour day job. I'm trying to think about that. I guess early on. Let's see here. I, well, it wasn't eight hours, but I worked at the Chinese Food Express in Marin, delivering Chinese food. And I'm trying to think, did I ever have a real, you know, I've never had one of those, you go in for eight hours and file. I never had one of those. Yeah, those will kill you. Those will kill you, but I never had that. Uh, and I can't tell you why I never had it. Uh, you would think somewhere along the line I had started out doing that or I had to do that to survive. But no, the first thing I did was uh, when I got into radio, I was in radio. And I, yeah, you got into you got in it really young. I was smart. I was in it when I was. Um, well, I first did it as a radio program, as a, uh, a high school radio program, and then I got a job at that station. And then from there on in, it was a succession of radio stations, some of which were terrible. I mean, I went to Reno, Nevada. That was my first real paying job outside of Marin County, and uh, then I went to Klamath Falls, Oregon. Worked in a radio station there for a while. And then I went to Modesto, California. You know, these were all small yeah. little little <laughs> outfits. And then uh, for Modesto, I went into the Navy. And then after the Navy, I went back to work for these same guys I worked for in Modesto. Only I did it in Sacramento with a good music station. And then I came back. Uh, I, after that, I got the job in Houston. And that was my first really big city job. All right, so it was a while before I got to any big city jobs, and then I went to Minneapolis, and then Chicago, and then ultimately New York. So you know, I uh, I think I you know I, that was my history, and then I came back to San Francisco. Thank you, folks. That's my entire biography. See you next week. You know. Uh, hey, you had the classic migratory pattern of someone trying to avoid child support. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All over the country. Klamath Falls, yeah, yeah, Houston. Right. A woman named Susan, I don't remember her. Uh, <laughs> oh, she got pregnant? Oh, by who? By me? Nah. Nah. I'm shooting blanks. Yeah, leave me alone. Yeah. But I know uh, someone that lives in Houston that that's, it just sounds like an absolute hellhole of weather wise. Weather wise, but I love the town. I really, really, that was one of my favorite cities I ever worked in. Now, part of it is, and we got to get going here in about a couple of minutes, um, uh, part of it is that you love a city that loves you, especially in radio. So if you go to a town that loves you, that you do very well in, you get high ratings and so on, you tend to love that town back. And I, I loved Houston. I got good ratings there. But I loved Houston. I had a good time. Then I moved to Minneapolis. I moved to Chicago. And I got really good ratings in New York. And New York loved me. 
And so I loved New York back. I had a love affair with New York. I mean, and believe me, if you're going to fall in love with any woman, New York is yeah, not yeah. the woman to fall in love with. But anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here, my pal, friend, thingy, yes, whatever, whatever you are. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll talk uh, next week. How's that? Sounds good. Okay. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Right. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Of course, we all love Larry Bubbles Brown. Who doesn't? Wait a minute, let me turn up my mic a little bit so you can hear me more. There we go. All righty. Uh, so anyway, I um, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is our last show of the week uh, this week. Uh, we're going to uh, take the next uh, day off going to give uh, ourselves a rest and also uh, Jack Bishop will take the night off as well tomorrow night it's the beginning of the 4th of July weekend I don't know how we will fare with people being here in fact it doesn't look like many people are lining up to be here tonight because everybody's out uh, traveling and on the road and and so on and uh, so we figured eh, what? we'll take the we'll take the night off where we'll be we'll be lazy okay uh, that that's the best way to handle it. Uh, and uh, right now we only have like two people even waiting to come on the show tonight. Here they are. There we go. There's uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, admit Jeff Stein. There we go. Okay, so then we'll have um, three people beside myself. Oh, my eyes are tearing today. Jeez, they've been good for about a week. And then all of a sudden today, woo! You got the air conditioner on? Yeah. Drying up the air? Probably that's it, you know. Uh, it, you know, and, and, and the first couple of days with air conditioning, you're okay, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, it's not fun. Not fun. I just, I, I, I'm just praying for some, just some cooler weather. <coughs> and now I'm going to sneeze. It's nice and cool out here. It's like 70. <laughs> Thanks for the prayers. Yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, anyway, uh, people, if you want to call, uh, tonight's the night to call. Look at it. S just a small bunch of people here getting together. Uh, you get to talk. Huh? What? You get to talk. Three God, three the us. way well, this is tonight, I should have taken tonight off, too. You know? <clears throat> Larkin will show up. He always is here. You know that. Tony will not be here. Why not? He's watching a base that basketball game. Oh, really? No, we're now Facebook friends. Oh. Phil warned me. I know. I know. I know. Now you. He gonna... warned me that 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 Tony can go on and on. I, I'll like hit the little you know on the Facebook Messenger. He'll go twenty or thirty messages. I'll wake up to go urinate. Well, he doesn't know how to do one long message. He knows right. how to and, do. 20 small messages and the problem is if I all I was getting was Facebook on the computer that wouldn't be a problem but it also comes up on my watch every time there's a new oh, yeah. message and so my watch is going bing 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 going, well must so be toning you know. yesterday yesterday I got up to urinate 10 in the morning. Oh, well, bravo. <laughs> I was glad you were able to do that because, it, you know, at your well. age, sometimes it's a little hard. As you get older, yeah. No, so, uh, no, excuse me. Let me take that back. At your age, it's not hard at all. That's right. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so, uh, get back to the phone. Hit the little, uh, like, acknowledge button on, on Facebook Messenger. Go back to sleep for four hours. Yeah. And I, and I get back up and there's not one. Not two, but 39 messages from him. Really? Well, you know, you can block him. I don't want to block him. Why don't you want to block him? I blocked him. That's a no. You blocked him. I blocked him. You blocked me. <laughs> did I block you? No, no, no. Jeff did. I sent you two re Facebook friend requests and you don't respond. Maybe he didn't know it was you. Well, I, I because you know we don't know you on the show as cigar dude. Yeah, Al cigar dude. Al yeah. cigar dude. And it's all yeah, one I word to Al if cigar I'm dude. Sending somebody a, a Facebook thing and it's not obvious because they have a picture of my dog there. 
I say, you know, in the message, I say, this is Alan from the Alex uh, Bennett show. Mm-hmm. And but Jeff doesn't respond. So that's okay. I, you know, I'll go cry in the corner right. for a while. Jeff doesn't respond? No. Yeah. I would respond to you. What? Well, then respond. There's a request sitting there for you. So does anybody else want to call us tonight? Or maybe I could just go on my weekend early. You know? I'm going to afford it. Yeah. happen today that we can talk about well let me see here let me i'm just trying to dab my eyes here because mm. it's it's uh and i'm sniffling too on top of it, it's probably the air conditioner anyway uh anything happened today uh, uh well let's see uh, i think nancy pelosi was it today she announced her uh her uh, uh investigative group for you know, oh. January 6th. And there's only one Republican. Oh, Liz Cheney. Was Liz Cheney, yeah. But yeah. there were going to be two. Oh, well. Well, I mean, there may be more, but there should be more. I mean, sure. really. I mean, I don't want them to go. And you know what? You know what? Uh, what's his name? Who's the guy from California? McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. I'm not Mike McCarthy. M- M- McCarthy. He said. Uh, that any Republican who agrees to be on the committee will be kind of booted out of the... Yeah, you know, kicked off their committees. Com- kicked yeah. off their committees, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody's going to want to be kicked off their committees. It's mm-hmm. important when you get a committee, you know? Like, like Liz Cheney got kicked off her Well, committee. I mean, like when I was in high school, I got on the prom committee, and that was a big deal. You know? I could have seen you with the proms, throwing them in the air at the edges with, with all the prom girls. No <laughs> prom. Dancing oh. prom, oh, not oh, pom-poms. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you were saying pom. Never mind. Give me an A, give me an L, give me an A, give me an N. What's that spell? A fucking asshole. Uh-huh. Anyway. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. Boy, Tony's well, got well, well, you, what's, it, what's that? Now it's name calling. Socks. <laughs> oh, you got bombas? No, no, they're they're just yellow socks. You know, in case I, in case I get lost in at night or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> did you knit? That, that. Did you knit that yourself? No, oh, I bought them. They're uh, bicycle riding, you know, so you don't get hit by a car. Oh, <laughs> they're reflective, is what you're saying. No, no not really. No, I really think they kind of glow in the dark or something, don't they? Yeah, they're just really bright. Cars Put it over speed. your head. Now, it's cold. It's freezing my, in San Francisco. My question is, do you own a bicycle? I do. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you know, because you can't ride without one. You know. Obviously. Yep. I ride without one. It's too cold in San Francisco, man. It's freezing. I used to ride a bicycle a lot around the marina in San Francisco. It's always cold in San Francisco. And then somebody one day stole my bike. Yeah, I know. And I went out and bought a new one. And somehow that bike just didn't feel like the old one, and I never bicycled around the marina again. Ah, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many bicycles I've had ripped off. I can't even keep count. Yeah. Yeah. I would one like time, to... I, I I got one stolen from the BART station. It was parked in the BART station inside the like a cage thing, locked with two locks. <laughs> and they fucking stole it. What I would what I would, yeah. I, I just figure somebody should have invented a non stealable bike. For instance, yeah. here's my suggestion. It, it's some kind of system in which <clears> if your bike gets stolen on your uh, uh, you have an app on your iPhone and you d- dial it in. Okay. Yeah. And it, the bike melts. <laughs> just, well, just completely. Take. I just put a low jack on the bike. Put a low jack on a bike. They have such Why a thing. Why not? Like Why not? What's that? If it's an expensive bike, you can do that. What's a low jack? Like GPS, where you can say where the bike is. Oh well, well, yeah, on. yeah. Look what hey, I you look. You can I, do I, that with Apple tiles or something. Wait like a minute, that. hold on. Yeah, you can. Track no. it with your but, phone. But that's what I bought today. Now that you mention it, I bought four of these little suckers. Okay, yeah. there they are. Oh, wait a minute, let me see here. There it okay. is. See? Oh, nice. I have one in my uh, I have one in my wallet for me, and then Marjorie. I bought these the other day because Marjorie uh, lost her wallet. Ooh. She went all through her bag and couldn't find her wallet. And she came home, and I said, "Well, 
let me look through the bag because sometimes when somebody who isn't involved looks through it, we look through it with a different view. And I put my hand in, I'm looking around and I'm feeling, and I, all of a sudden on the side of the thing, I feel this, what seems to be her wallet. And I go to the back and there's another zipper, but the other zipper, the first zipper she had, had like a gold zipper. And then there was another one with the gold. This had a black zipper, so you couldn't even see there was a zipper there. So I unzipped it, pulled it out, and there was her, there was her wallet, okay? So immediately I said, you know, I, I didn't think I'd have any need for air tags, but I think I know someone who has a need for one. Yeah. Yeah. And if she had had these air t this air tag in her wallet, okay, all she would have had to do was go to her thing, goes, Where, where's my air tag? And it would say, oh, it's with, you know, if it's within Bluetooth range, it immediately tells you exactly where it is. If it's downtown somewhere and you're not there, it does show up on a map. Okay, but I, uh, she, uh, I said, I got to get her one of those. So I put out 99 bucks today and got four of them. And then I'm lazy, okay? It says uh, delivery by July 23rd. And I'm going, what? I, I don't want to wait till July 23rd. She said, but um, immediate delivery, $9. And I said, I looked to see how long the immediate delivery would be, and it would get to me within an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. What they do is they have a courier come by and get the stuff and take it out to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I spent the nine bucks in this afternoon, uh, after, right after I ordered them, and I within within an hour actually I got uh, the uh, air tags. Mm -hmm. So now we have the air tags. You uh, got to recharge them every so often. Hmm. <clears throat> you have to recharge them every so often. Wow. Really? Oh, no, you yeah. don't. You don't recharge them. What do you do with them? Buy new ones? There's a battery. Right, you recharge the battery. No, you don't recharge the battery. You buy a new battery. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Because I, it, I think you, it just you take it and you flip it open, and there's the where the um, battery goes. You can get one of the batteries, one of these bigger ones. And you just put it in there, and it's good for a year, they say. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm. Round yeah, but you know, you, you're not going to lose your wallet that often. But She's not going to lose her purse fun. that often. So chances are she'll go a year and a half before she needs it, and then we wouldn't have changed the battery, and she can't find it. You know, so that's that's the downside of that. Well, is it just us? I guess we're the only ones who have nothing to do over this la this weekend coming up. Yeah, that's 40 people watching. Huh? There's 40 people There are watching. 40 people watching. Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're kind of having a nice time tonight, you know. <laughs> uh, I did have it out last night with Amy on Jack's show, though. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, do, you were there, right, right Charlie? Yeah. 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 Both of us. Uh, I, I get a little sick of her and her misinformation about people and their peccadillas and so on. I, what got me really mad last night was when she said, well, you know, Woody Allen is guilty of what he did because uh, uh, the daughter uh, uh, taught, uh, wrote a book about it. And I said, really? I said, I'm sorry, it, 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 is that a deposition? Is that uh, testifying in court under oath? She said, well, no. I said, nobody's ever charged him with anything, but the man has a hard time getting financing right now and has a hard time getting people to be in his films, and it's all because of this daughter and that nutcase, Mia Farrow, accusing him of something which probably she inculcated into this kid's memory when she was young, you know? And, and there's never been a single attorney, district attorney or attorney, state attorney general or whatever, whoever felt there was a case there, you know, and yet this guy is being held to account like he had done it. And, and uh, I, if, if, if people want to see his side of the story, just go on YouTube and see Woody Allen on whatever, and it will lead you to the 60 Minutes interview he did in which he just told the whole thing. And no, I didn't. He said, I'd be stupid to do it. You know, I'm going to go up 
to a house where I'm not welcome particularly, but I'm there to see my daughter, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, rape her? Are you out of your mind? You know, I'm sorry. That's an absolute fiction. Well, last night, Amy goes on and she's like blasting away at Woody Allen's guilty and he, you know, we all know he did it. And, and I'm going, I'm sorry, these things have to be adjudicated in, in a court of law. I mean, if you want to argue about the Cosby situation, she says, well, you know, they got him on all those rapes. I said, no, they only got him on one. There was only one they could go after him on because all the others had uh, they were, had uh, gone into uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, where you can't you can't adjudicate them anymore. And they were, uh -huh. they were just uh, corrobor corroborating uh, witnesses, like. No, no, but you could, the, mean, the other yeah. cases, the other cases, time had passed. Yeah. Oh, to be statute of limitations. Statute now. of limitations. Yeah. So there was a statute of limitations on them, and uh, that's the reason why uh, a lot of those didn't didn't come forward. Uh, they all came forward, and I think what was wrong about that case is they came forward. But if they if if the statute of limitations is run out on a case, should that person then be allowed to come into court and testify against the person because that particular the set of circumstances was never adjudicated. I don't know. It, uh, but anyway, I tried to inform her that where Woody Allen was concerned, it was terrible. You know, that, that, that I think that the man is, uh, you know, God knows he's old enough. Now he's about 86 now. And maybe he's got another couple of movies left in him. Let him do them, you know? He, you know, just because, uh, you know, Mia Farrow got somebody to make this documentary doesn't mean it's true. He should move to France, make movies in France. No, he like, made this last movie in Spain. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Spain. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it had to be Spain because uh, Bobby Slayton, my friend, is in it, and they, he told me about being flown to Spain to do it. Um, and it was for one line, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, it, it, he it, the guy's having a hard time making films now, just because all these people said, "Well, I don't want to work with him. I, I, I can't work with him. I can't work with somebody who raped his daughter." What do you mean you can't? Why can't you work with Woody Allen? You worked with him before. He treated you well. Why can't you work with him again? The reason you can't work with him again is you're afraid that people will be mad at you and not hire you because you worked with Woody Allen. So bravo to Scarlett Johansson, who stood up for Woody Allen, you know, and a few other actresses as well. Um, anyway, I, I rest my case, but, but you heard that whole little situation last night with, uh, with Amy, the big liberal. Oh, yeah, we heard it. The, well, the big liberal who in no way believes in the Constitution or the fact that people are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, and that we don't hang them by the closest tree on innuendo. You know, we if we're gonna if we're gonna I mean, let's face it, they convicted uh, uh, Bill Cosby. At least at the time, we believe legitimately. But it turns and out that there were the mitigating circumstances mm -hmm. where he had testified to what is his guilt, basically, in a civil court, and was told that if he did it there, they would not charge him in the state. And then the DA, the state uh, attorney general, changed. And That's the new so one came in and decided to prosecute him, not realizing that this deal had been struck. So uh, finally, the... Uh, the uh, 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 Supreme Court in, in Philadelphia, in, P in Pennsylvania, said, uh-uh, you know, you, he, 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 this was a deal that was struck and you have to stick by it. And they said, we are now vacating the, uh, the, gu the guilty verdict, and more than that, you can't ever try him again. So, double, like, double, jeopardy. Like what, double jeopardy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what happened to Polanski. That's why he took off, because 
the judge wasn't going to something that there was I can't remember exactly yes but there was a deal made with yeah. the judge that if he pleaded guilty they would give him time served or whatever yeah right so something he like pleaded that. guilty and then it turned out they wanted to throw him in jail for that but he had made a deal already that he would do that, which he said, I wasn't even really, I don't think that guilty, but he just did it. And when they, you know, when they wouldn't uh, live by their deal, he hightailed it to Europe, you know, and his not, he's, he's asked to be allowed to come back into this country again, and that he'd even be willing to come back and have that case retried. They'll let him back in if he votes for Donald Trump. In but they said he has to come back first before they'll yeah. retry him. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That, that's a problem. Now, there's that a... Way you can go, yeah, they can go stop him and put him in jail before he has a well, chance to do there, There's another case in which I, you know, um, to begin with, uh, the, the woman he had sex with, who was a young girl at the time, I think she was, what, 13 or 14? 13. 13. Yeah. 13. Mm -hmm has since said that all is forgiven. She doesn't care. Her life has not been ruined by her relationship with Roman Polanski. Unfortunately, the law yeah. doesn't. Unfortunately, the law doesn't agree with that. But, right. but she has said that, and she was willing to testify to that once he came back on his yeah. behalf. Okay. For the right amount of money, probably. Uh, no, not for the right amount not of money, always. Alan. She has volunteered to do that. She volunteered to do that. And so he, he asked to come back and have the whole thing taken to court so he could show this and all. And, what it, and it happened so many years ago, too. Well, um, maybe she wants to marry Polanski. I hear he's looking for a new wife. Did you hear he's looking for a new wife? I haven't heard that he's looking for a new I wife. I haven't heard anything about that. I, I, well, his last wife kind of ended up dead, huh? What? Sharon Tate. That wasn't his last wife. He's remarried oh. since. Oh, well, I don't follow him that closely. Well, then why do you make a statement like that if you don't follow him? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Who knew that he got remarried? I don't know. I don't I, follow people. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'll look it up here. I'll look it up here. Okay. Uh, I think he's still married to that actress, a French actress. I think yeah. so, Polanski. And they were living in... Uh, Switzerland, because that's where he had to go. Uh, because you remember they were they were trying to extradite him from France. His spouse is Emmanuel Senier. Yeah. Married her in 1989. She so, was hot. Yeah. Um, he was also married to Sharon Tate, 1968 to 1969. One year. Tom's got a one-track mind. Oh, Barbara Qualat <laughs> Qual. How Barbara Kowalska lasts. He was married to her for three years. So, oh. you know, but he's been married to this one for a long time. And he has uh, two children, one named Morgan and one named Elvis. <laughs> and, oh. um, you know, he wore, won an Academy Award in exile. Uh, but he's, you know, he's never been able to come back here, and he's often said he would love to come back. He'd love to come back and make movies in Hollywood. And, and so I'm, I'm actually surprised he never made a movie about Charles Manson. Why? Uh, because I think that it would have been appropriate. Why? Child. Why? Charles Do you really Manson. think if, if your wife was murdered by somebody, would you want to make a movie about it? I mean... She wasn't murdered by Charles. And then if he did he do it, they'd say he was... Well, uh, you know, Quentin Tarantino made a version of that. Okay. Okay. Uh, not one that's accurate, because at the end... Well, I won't say how it ends for people. I've seen see. it. Yeah. It's not the an accurate. But it, it, that was, I kind of think, the best fun part about the film. Mm -hmm. He didn't let you think it was going to end the way it was going to, what the way it actually ended in real life. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, now I spoiled it for all of you. Well, you know something? The picture is what? Two years old. Go fuck yourself if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, yet. plenty of time to go see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had plenty yeah. of time to go see it. But anyway, so I guess nobody else is going to call tonight, huh? Wait, mm -hmm. do we, you think. Uh, you, you think um, Trump's going to slip through this? 
Mm. <sighs> good chance. Yes, I do. I think if it goes to, tri I think if it goes to trial, no. Okay. Well, but I think his company's going to be bankrupt. Oh yeah. I I don't I don't think uh, this Weisselberg guy is going to go to jail for Trump. You we'll know? see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he is. Daughter but... might go. Yeah, his daughter. His daughter might go. Yeah. Yeah. I but... saw. Um, I was watching Fox and. Whose daughter? Weitzelberg? Oh, Who? Trump's daughter. Who? Trump's daughter. Oh, Trump's daughter. Why, it's, why Ivanka? She, she did the same thing that Weiselberg did. Oh, okay. She took money and hid, hid it from the IRS. They're looking at her, too. Yeah. What they were doing is they were taking money. If I'm uh, Correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I, I, just, I find it so hard to watch some of those stupid uh, uh, you know, news channels that mm -hmm. I didn't get every inch of the story, but what I heard was, hello there, Kevin, thank you for calling and joining in. Yeah, uh, I know. Um, uh, no ways. That, uh, that um, they were going out and using money from the Trump Corporation and expendituring it out as business expenses when in fact it was things like tuitions for their kids, and the cars and the homes in the country and all of that, all calling it tax exempt stuff because it was for the company. You can, you can only do that up to a point, you know? Uh, and here it seems like that was going on all the time. Yeah. And as a result, they avoided paying taxes. And that's how Trump probably always been paying himself all of his life, you know? Takes money out of the company and expenses it and never pays any tax on it. Probably, and I think, I've got to tell you, I mean, this is the only place I'm going to defend Donald Trump, but I think the only way he got away, or the only way he would have gotten away with it is if he never became president of the United yeah. States. Well, okay. The spotlight would have never been on him. They, yeah, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't have been, and they've gone after him because he was president of the United States. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it was the biggest mistake he ever made running for president of the United States. Yeah. What did it get him? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't think he expected to win. Yeah. I, I think the taking of the money and not paying taxes, you got embezzlement, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and, and who is the victim, according to the complaint? The victim is the IRS. Yeah. I'm sorry. You don't fuck with the IRS. No, yeah. no. You know? It's wrong. What do you think about the indictments today, Kevin? Uh, to be honest with you, I have not been paying much attention to the uh, the news at all. But as usual, I think he's going to uh, jump into a pile of shit and come out smelling like a rose. I'm sorry, but it's probably what be what's going to happen. Don't think I'll be right. I, I think this is up. The jig's up. I, I hope not. I hope I not. But I think what I'll tell you. I think what's going to happen. Okay, it's my just my theory. Um, it's not Trump is not going to wind up in jail over this. Okay, but his company is going to go under. And that's fine too. Because but, because you know. to begin with the expense, he's defending his corporation as well as I don't know if they're handling Weitzelberg's defense, but he's handling. You know, he's doing as much of that as possible on uh, paying for it through uh, the Trump Organization. And uh, I don't think the Trump Organization has that much money. I think the Trump Organization is probably close to broke. I think yeah. Weitzelberg is going to roll on Ivanka, not on Donald. You think so? I, I, I don't know. Okay. I, I think the government would like to see him roll on 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 the Big Apple, but on whatever you want to call him, mm -hmm. Big Turd. But um, I don't know. I don't think he's gonna say anything negative, unless it's uh, like, uh, you know, when you threaten people with life imprisonment and they've done something wrong, mm -hmm. people tend to say, "Well, cut me a deal." You know, what do you want? Well, we want the Big Apple. Okay, you know, or the Big Turd in this case. You know, and people tend to snitch off their mother, 
you know i I've, I've watched drug dealers turn on and say well my mother gets me the meth and i sell it and you know and they're like oh that's interesting to know we didn't know that and uh, thank you and then they go and arrest the mother and the child goes he gets a reduced sentence or goes free or something like that so you're and saying I'll, donald donald will will go you know roll over I don't think Donald will roll Donald, over. Donald, right? believe it or not, Donald will roll over on people. Oh, in a, in a heartbeat. In a right, heartbeat. right, right. No, yeah, he'd fucking turn out, turn in all his kids in. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying Ivanka's should maybe she should get to follow Roman Polanski and leave now. Yeah. While she can. Well, I well, saw uh, yeah. I saw Eric Trump on uh, Fox News tonight, and he he looked scared as shit. He looked. He had this, you know. I saw the same thing. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, would, you was, would you agree? With he didn't a, look too happy. He's yeah. as dumb as a rock. He'll probably stick around and and, and wait for it to happen. <laughs> That's right. He'll wonder why he ends up. Which in one? Which one is? Yeah. Which one is? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Which one uh-huh. Is it Don Junior? You're talking about was on? Oh. Eric's the. Uh, Eric. You mean Eric. The, you mean the the retarded child? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That guy's as stupid as a box of rocks. Yeah. 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 Well, they're all fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. One of them took, took drugs to get that way. That one was born that way, I think. Yeah. I wonder how guilty, uh, 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 what's her name is, uh, Melania, Malaria. Nah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she oh, was. She said, you guy. know, if if everybody was sitting around buying stuff and then charging it to the company, do you really think that she's not? She didn't do right. that too. She's guilty well, by she, association. Yeah, maybe guilt by association. She probably, they bought her furs. Donald said, hey, look, the school wants their corporation wants to buy you some furs. You know, she might be in possession of ill-gotten Well, games, no, I think, I, I, think I think she, she I may know. have gone out yeah, and bought Trump stuff. Just sat there and said, I don't know want to know where it come from. Just give it to me. No, but I think know, she may be. I think she may have actually um, uh, bought stuff, you know, using the company card. Oh sure, uh, but that she was told, "Hey, go ahead, do it." You know, by Weitzelberg, sure. for instance. Oh, this is all legit. Go ahead, do it. Just yeah, just don't worry about it. Right. I mean, there's a, you know, I used to do that. I had a company, I had a, a, a company, and and we had a right pocket and a left pocket. But anytime sure. I bought a computer, that came out of the right pocket. Anytime I went on a vacation for myself, that came out of the left pocket. You know, there there are things you can expense in a corporation yeah. that, quite frankly, you know, I mean, all the t- every TV set I ever bought for a while there was tax deductible. Sure. Because. But you're not doing it on the scale that someone like Trump is doing it, where he's building buildings and and shit like that. You yeah. know, they don't care about TVs and doorknobs and they're talking about you know well they're talking but they're talking here casinos in the case of weitzelberg they're talking about weitzelberg sending his kids to college and expensing that that, expensing that to the trump corporation and he wasn't too slick about it either he didn't hide it no yeah he he had apartments uh in in trump tower that was uh paid by trump oh they something about a hundred and fifty three thousand dollars last year or something like that or it's all, all together. It's a, lot like, of, a lot of money like, uh, went through his hands. The ill-gotten gains. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like one point. Well, 1. I don't know. I don't know. Billion. You know, I don't know if it's ill-gotten gains as much as it's gains that weren't reported. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. You know, they didn't tax pay fraud. taxes. Not paying on that. taxes. That's the problem. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, Just and like a lot. Got Al Capone on. Well, yeah. even you bet. even they a couldn't get him even even a gangster. City, how long has the, the the state of New York been bitching about him doing that? Al Capone. Years and years and years. Yeah, but they just they they, they took them two trips to the Supreme Court to get his tax returns. Right. And now they got them. Right. Of course, the New York Times had them all the way from when. Uh, his niece get, uh, gave them to it to we the New York. We don't have a history of prosecuting sitting presidents. Now, now wait a minute. Now, no I got, I got a question. President. Is it is it is it Weitzelberg playing a game? Is and it, he's gotten away it, with it. Now he's getting caught. It's it yeah. is it Weitzelberg's niece who turned over? No, no, no. Trump's daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law. 
yeah. turned over a whole bunch of papers to this uh, mm -hmm. to the yeah. to, to the, the state attorney general. Uh, my question is, how did she get these papers? I don't know. I mean, did he, did he leave them out to be shredded, and she just grabbed them, or what? He was married uh, to the guy's yeah. son, and they were living in a fancy uh, hotel that was paid for by Trump. Yeah, but and that's fine. But she had all these records. Those are the records that she turned over. But yeah, but how did she get them short how did of she stealing? Come about them, John. Short of from stealing. Her husband. Got them from her husband. Did he give them to her? And 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 she what's what's the mo what's the though. motivation here? Is she divorced now from that husband? Yeah. Okay. And they, but, and but, but but they ripped her off. You know, he, she got a bad ah, deal. So this is revenge. Well, this is revenge. Oh, yeah. But my question is still: Are these papers stolen? No, they're just and, photocopied. <laughs> were they okay? If they were photocopied. Yeah, you don't got to steal them. You, know? you don't have to steal them. Yeah, same you're right. difference, John. Right. You photocopy I think if you photocopy them, that's not yeah, that. That's that's too. Who said she's not supposed to have them? She was married to the guy. But no, she's not. Uh, no, she is and, not necessarily allowed to have them because she's married to the guy. Right. That's right. Well, it yeah. might be community property. It might be just but, stuff but from no, the no, divorce. No, no, no. Those papers are papers about the Trump organization, and they don't come yeah. under the... How do you know? We don't know. You they know. don't come under the category of community property. Well, how do you know? You haven't seen the papers. No, you don't know no. what the papers are. The papers are business papers from the Trump Corporation. We don't know that. No, we know that. It's been said. Okay, okay you that's know that. The, that's where I the, don't know the, that. The <laughs> about. That's what the whole what? thing is about. That's what the whole thing's about. It's about the corporation. It's not about the personal. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying she is not the whole case. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the state of New York has got 15 reasons to say that that they illegally uh, ran their company mm -hmm. and 15 counts. didn't pay the taxes. You know, what's amazing to me. You're, you're such a, a high profile guy as Trump. OK. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, you don't steal that way. You don't take that chance. You know, I well, mean, gangsters know you don't do that. He's stupid and it's been his whole life. That's his whole life he's been doing that no, well, shit. Well, actually his whole life has been a con. Exactly. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Come you build me this building. The old document. Oh, I can't pay you. What, what did you say? Somebody said something. I go ahead, Kevin. I was saying, you look at some of those old documentaries that he's done and some of the old TV interviews and that sort of thing back with, uh, what's her name? Uh, I can't remember her name that used to do the old, you know, back in the Rona 70s Barrett? and 80s. Yeah, yeah, her, Rona, Rona Barrett. Rona Barrett, yeah. He, he held nothing back. You know, he, he would he would tell you straight up, well, that's the way I do things. That's the way we do things. And da-da-da-da, how I manipulated this. And it's just the way that I do things. And you knew he was doing shit back then. He's not the smartest egg out there. I think we but all he, know that. But he, he flaunted it. Yep. And if he had never you know, become goes around, president. Comes around and hopefully it go, come, it's coming around eventually. Yeah, if he had never become president, he would have never been in the spotlight. Nobody would have gave a shit. Right. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I no, think he would have eventually gotten it. And if he gets it. If he gets it, I don't think, you know, that's still the question. Is he yeah. going to get it? I don't know. Yeah. I I just we'll think that he really kind yeah, of... I think Ivanka and Eric are really nervous about now. They probably have already... Well, they say that Trump seems to be pretty nervous, too, because he hasn't been, like, tweeting like crazy. Not tweeting, but making pronouncements like crazy about I, this. Didn't he well, just go out on his world tour? Today? <laughs> huh? He's still out on his world tour telling everybody how great he is and how he's going to be president in August and president yeah, he, in, he, in 2024. He's, to, uh, so. he's, he's got a rally in Well, Florida. wait a minute. If he's going to be yeah, president in August, he can't be president in 2024. He's not that quiet. No, he's out <laughs> he's there. He's in a fight with uh, DeSantis because uh, he <coughs> wants to do a rally in Florida, and he's going to do a rally when that tragedy happened. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, DeSantis. Sure, why not? They'll probably yeah, use it as Trump, a background. Trump will do it, but DeSantis doesn't want him to do it. But Trump says, "Fuck you! I'm going to do it anyway." Yeah, he's going to use Trump it as a don't background. Give it yet. Yeah, Trump he'll use it, it as a background. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're taking, they're going after the low hanging fruit and mm -hmm. like a criminal case works and they're going to get up to him at some point. Will he do jail time? Probably not. But will they get up to him before he croaks? Maybe. How many here want to see him in jail? Hmm. I think it would be nice. Two hands yeah. up for that. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah about but the problem is he will never see a jail jail. He'll go to a white collar jail. He'll get TV. He'll get, you know, it won't be jail. He'll have I'll a K cup that. machine. Okay. How that. does this make, how would this make us look on the national stage? That America, the supposed th country that talks about what a democracy they are, has taken an ex president and put him in jail, much like a, a third world South American country. No, well, on top of that, that who would be in jail? Top, who, no. Wait a minute. Hold on a sec. One at a time. Yes, Kevin and then uh, Charlie. What would it make it look like if, if, depending on who is in power when he goes to jail, mm -hmm. what would that make the, if a Democrats were in power and he goes to jail, what would that make them look like? Yeah. You know, from the outside. The Democrats put the Republican into jail. Oh, that's what happens over there in America. Yeah. Well, well that's what Israel, I was saying. They had a guy, a, a president went to jail. Who? Uh, who? The guy, the president of Israel? The old they don't have presidents. You no, know, they. I, mean, I think you. I think you're right. I think you're right. But I'm yeah. prime minister. The Was problem that, is how. Look how bad it makes us look that we have a president who deliberately breaks the law in front of everybody. Breaks the law, admits to breaking the law, and then we don't do shit about it. Yeah, that makes us look like shit. That's the truth too. It makes I mean, both the Democrats and the Republicans look like shit. You know what I love story. though. What I love though is that. This guy, you know, he once said, I could shoot somebody on Fifth yeah. Avenue and get yeah. away with it. And, you know, he's really, tr it's really true where the Republicans are concerned. Tomorrow, yeah. he could shoot Melania dead, okay, in a, in a fight at Mar-a-Lago. And the Republicans would be defending him. Yep. You know, well, he didn't really mean it. Come on, people get cranky. You know, I mean, he deserved it. He, he, Maybe the CIA could teach Melania how to shoot, <laughs> and he, she could take the she could take the first shot. Yeah. He deliberately tried to take over the government on January the sixth, and he's getting away with it. And Republicans Absolutely. are defending him. Absolutely, Charlie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it was just amazing to me that he wasn't willing to, you know, go off in the sunset. You know, with yeah. some dignity, with some dignity. I mean, he should, if he had just gone away with some dignity, yeah, he might have an easy chance for 2024. But I don't know that he's got a real chance for 2024. You know. His strategy is always no. to be a big mouth, and, and he lies about everything. Here's my question, uh, and maybe you guys can answer. Oh, you're doing this yeah, too, I'm huh? I'm doing it too, yeah. Look at her. <laughs> Oh. Every night. We're both on red. Well, yeah, but I, I do it for the arthritis. So yeah. do I. Because I want to get another one of those shots. They don't work. Yeah. But anyway. They just leave you all bruised up and everything. Uh, here's the question. You know, we have to look at a reality that in two, it was it, three and a half years, okay, there is going to be another election. All right? And we're going to have to put up another Democrat and another Republican. Uh, how strong a candidate do you feel Joe Biden will be after he's been president for one term? Not going to run. You don't think he's going to run? No, I don't think so either. Okay. I think he'll step oh. aside and let, let uh, Kamala Harris run. Can she win? I don't think Kamala is going to run either. I think... I think Kamala's gonna not even gonna make it all four years as VP. I th I why? think why? She's, um, I, I I just think she's screwed up. You know, she's she's her, she's she's got problems. Like her, her, her team and everything. Just well, well like what? Give, me, give us an example. Um, you know, outside of the fact that the Republicans are constantly complaining about her. 
But that's maybe a good thing. Yeah. You know. Keeps her in the limelight. Yeah, keeps her in the limelight. But, I mean, uh, what has she done bad? No, not, nothing politically bad. I mean, I, I like her politics, but her, um, her uh, back, I mean, not her background, but her, um, you know, her office, the people that work for her, they're all screwed up and they're they're having they're fighting and stuff and says who says who i haven't heard any of this i haven't heard anything there's an about article that. in politico today about right that. politico politico boy they're real reliable that's like fox news saying something give me right a political's pretty good that's a good no they you know, they're they're just as wrong most of the time as anybody else you right. know mm -hmm. uh you know, know and they, they what happens with people like political like any of the news outfits They've got to they got to gin up everything, you know. Like tonight, I was watching. Who's this guy on the six o'clock at night? Uh, the lawyer uh, on MSNBC, and he's talking about Weitzelberg, and it's like he's relishing the fact that a Weitzelberg got arrested, so yeah. much so that he's then showing him walking down the hallway with his handcuffs behind him, and then they. They, they spotlight, they dim everything else out and spotlight the handcuffs. <laughs> and I'm going, what are you doing that for? You know, we know he got arrested. We can go yay or nay or whatever we want to do, but it makes no other sense, to be honest with you. You know? Uh, hey, and the same thing is true of political. Politico makes their money off of ginning stuff up. So they bring out something like that. Oh, yeah, the staff's unhappy. We don't know that. You know, and that's not... But my question was, I mean, getting back to what my question was, who, if he doesn't run, who can be the nominee for the Democrats? Who have we got that's great? You know? I mean, the Republicans have Matt Gates. let's face it, and uh, that's a really good chance right there. <laughs> I think I think DeSantis stands a better chance than or that. DeSantis, yeah. yeah. But no, but DeSantis. who who could the Democrats put up that would be a good candidate? And forget about Kamala Harris because I don't think she's the best idea. I no. think I think she's a our, our governor who might be out of a job. I don't well, think the, before all of this recall, I would have said that. I th I said that too. And then as time went on and I saw him do stuff, I went, eh, I don't know, maybe that's not a great idea. Yeah. Uh, Cuomo? Uh, no, not Cuomo. No, uh, no California. Uh, California. Newsom. Newsom. Newsom? President? Newsom. Yeah. How about the guy who's uh, California, the senator? Uh, the the, the uh, Hispanic? One the that was appointed to replace Kamala. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not talking oh, about Feinstein. You're not talking about Feinstein. Hell, she's got more of a turkey no, neck than I do. Oh, guy. Becerra, I mean, Feinstein's yeah. losing it. She, she's. I think she's got yeah, all. She's uh, yeah. got Ronnie's disease. Ronnie yeah. Reagan's disease. Yeah. Yeah, she's losing it. I don't think she'll run again. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 okay. So, but, but forget about knows. that. And forget about again. Newsom. Newsom was a good idea until uh, recently when he did a lot of really yeah. stupid things okay uh cuomo would have been a good bet but come on you know uh it's not gonna happen all right so who you we know, got this is a problem that we talked about a while back is that when the democrats when we were talking about and bitching about the republicans in power and and how the democrats were going to get into power and and how they tend to step on their own dicks and, mm -hmm. and they're doing exactly that now they're doing nope. it again and you know, we, they we to were come. hoping that you know there was going to be someone that was going to step up and hopefully take this thing over and at least stand out and i don't see it happening yet and there nope. has to be someone to step up now yeah. to start making himself look good him or her making themselves look good now so that we can start backing up that person in the next election because right now and this is what happens with the democrats is they sit around and and then nobody comes up to the top because it sure as hell ain't going to be schumer and it sure as hell ain't going to be mm -hmm. nancy it's not going to be any of those people someone in that group 
has to step up well, and I start mean, making they, themselves they, look presidential. Well, they, it's, AOC. It, uh, an AOC, forget it. Not, oh, no, yeah, forget right. That. No, that ain't All happening. Four votes. Well, she, she's too young, for one. Also, yeah. also, she's too divisive. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, she's too divisive. You need someone no, in no, not that age. I mean, she's she'll be thirty five by by the time. Yeah, well, thirty. But, 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 and, and, but and she you know, the only the one that I see that's even close that's coming that was in the last group was might even be Buttigieg of all fucking people. I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. Bet he, he's he's an up and coming Democrat. I've, yeah, I'd vote and, for him. And he actually had a halfway, you know brain in his mind that, that yeah. went on both sides of the aisle, had a brain, mm -hmm. and actually could think on both sides of the aisle, but Plus, I don't know if that's going to happen. But, How about Yang? Uh, oh, forget uh, No, oh. Yang. Yang okay. couldn't even get to be mayor of New York for oh, crying out loud. I mean, How about Bernie? One more time for Bernie. Oh, yeah. Bernie. 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 Okay. Bernie. Here's why AOC is not a good idea, because she's made her entire career being the outsider too radical too radical no. i think she i think she's good i like her but she's not the kind of person i'm talking about we got to talk about somebody that's electable as yeah. well yeah. Uh, yeah. uh in the case of pete Buttigieg, not a bad idea except for the fact what are they going to say when he starts running exactly yeah. but it, that, that, you know that could change in the next couple of years but he, he could by the way for those people who don't know what i'm he talking could be making himself I, a name Right now, know. with infrastructure, everywhere, you know, he's in the right spot. Yeah. Everywhere I go, it's pride about pride right now. Yeah, but you live but in you, you live in California. Jumping up and down about you, it. You live no, in California. That's good. He's smart let about me it. let me see the gay pride parade in Des Moines. Okay. No, I understand what you're saying, but I, yeah, I get that. But he's know. he's an up and coming. He's a smart guy. I I think he would make an excellent president by the time he so gets too. through with his doing his work in this administration. I think he'd be terrific. I like the guy. I I, I was well, overwhelmed it's not by. It's necessarily that he's the guy. It's just the fact that no one is stepping up and and making that kind of a an impact on the Democratic Party. That's right. And, and if someone would could in you know in the "Quote unquote straight group yeah. come up and make that kind of an impact. Maybe yeah. people could start getting behind them now instead of six months before the fucking election is coming up. Jeff, you know that's the problem. Adam Schiff, the guy from California. Yeah, but he's not going to run for president. Uh, I don't think so. Why not? I don't Look, know. you I, need I, somebody. I it, number one, there are two things that get people elected, and in this case, with Biden. Uh, it wasn't true, but he was also running against an ogre, uh, so looks didn't matter, you know. Uh, uh, what mattered in this case was demeanor, and and uh, everybody was so tired of Trump after four years. We were mm -hmm. exhausted. We wanted somebody who was going to put us to sleep, and we found him. Yeah. You know, well, if he gives one wanted, more speech, we wanted to calm the calm the office down is what we wanted to do yeah and that's what happened yeah and he calmed it down and get yeah. the rest of the world to yeah. like us again uh, yeah but uh he's not exactly exciting okay which i'm sorry after four years of trump we don't need a lot of excitement right now no you know but i think that if we're going to run somebody it's got to be somebody who number one is is very is likable mm -hmm. and he's uh, he or she uh, is uh, is is uh, uh, maybe maybe Ted Cruz will change parties. Yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we about you... unlikable. Right. By the way, I mentioned That's Matt Gates idiot. earlier, uh, who uh, maybe I'm sure... maybe Beto will run again. Huh? Who? <laughs> Beto. Yeah. Oh, Beto O'Rourke. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, that was... <laughs> He's good guy. Huh? But, you know the thing is. You got the Demo Democrats have, have got to find somebody that can appeal to some Republicans. That you know, and that's yep. going to be hard. You got to find think, the I person think, that gets the moderates. I think part of what we got to do. I think part of what we got to like do me. is we've got to put yep. Schumer out to bit lunch, and we've got to put Pelosi out to lunch, and we got to get rid of all these old voices yep. and get some new voices in there to yep. reinvigorate the party. You know, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't, and I'm old, okay? 
But I'm not that fond of a lot of old politicians. I, I don't like it looking like an old man's club who can you know, barely figure yep. out how to put a suit on every morning without drooling on themselves. Yes, uh, 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 Charlie. Yeah, I, I disagree that they have to get Republicans. Republicans are shrinking. I mean, there's there's the less than they're getting down close to thirty percent of people who say that they're actually Republicans anymore. They don't have to appeal to Republicans. They got to bring out all these eighteen, twenty, and twenty-five year olds. You've also you've all. Do that by I agree with you, Charlie. I agree with you, Charlie. But don't forget. Trump got 70 million people to vote for him, and that's... And that was every fucking Republican in the country. That's all he's going to get. More than Not necessarily. You had a lot of Democrats and independents that were jumping ship just because of what he was saying that he was going to do. He was going to do a lot of stuff that uh, the Democrats weren't doing. And uh, and he was, he was saying a lot of... You know, he but, had me tempted, too, because he was saying that he was going to get a lot of infrastructure done. I'm going to fix these bridges. I'm going to fix these roads. I'm going to, he, he did that. not do one of those things. Not he didn't one. do any of them. He didn't yeah, do anything. Except for there is somebody on this panel that voted for him the second time around. Who? Me. You voted for who? Right. Trump. You voted for Trump. I voted but, for Trump because but, just what Kevin said. There was many times when I I had that thought in my mind that he, this guy's going to get some stuff done infrastructurally wise. He doesn't because do any good if he gets the wrong been, things done. He couldn't build yeah, a fucking we, wall. Governor, are you talking about the first time or the second time? Second time. You voted for him the second time? No, we're we talking, talking about, about the first time. The first couple times. Did you vote what? for him the first time? No, I didn't vote for him the first time. Voted for the second and time? So I'm why talking about the second out? time. I mean, we only got I a little go. bit of time left here, but I, I literally, what? But wait, 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 uh, Kevin, I was saying I, I literally stood in the voting booth for probably 20 minutes trying to figure out which box I was going to check. Between it who? took me 20 minutes. Between Trump and Biden, or Trump and Trump Clinton? and by or Trump um, and Trump Hillary. And Hillary. Hillary. Mm. Yeah. I can understand that. Well, because at that point, unknown. he was an unknown. Because he was Trump one that was, was. going to get shit done. My question is, if you had voted for him, would you feel guilty now? Fucking A right. <laughs> no. Okay, that's... Uh, that's Definitely. That's, that's Definitely. the point we got. Man, well, you voted you for him. Do a cry baby but why afterwards. did you vote for him the second time, Alan? Uh, because, because... I don't know. I, I just thought that he was going to do better things with the country. But he think. did nothing but shitty things for the country for four yeah. years. Hey, I think we're smoking some good shit, Al. Obviously. Yeah, 605,000 I mean, dead Americans. I mean, why? Not, what made you that, think that he suddenly to was going to see the different. light and become this great president? He was going to solve that terrible stuff from China. Yeah, he thought he was going to help infrastructure. He couldn't even build that goddamn I wall. Believe, I didn't believe his COVID stance, but, I, but there were other things. He, he said, said in 2016 that the, he would have a tax plan that the rich people would hate. Yep. Yeah. And he had a tax plan that yeah. every yeah. average American hated. Well, we yeah. talk he about the, the Democrats opposite. have no way of doing things. Lied through his teeth. He had the first two years, Trump did. Or he controlled the total Congress, couldn't get yeah. his wall built, couldn't get health care under control. A lot of that stuff when he had total control. Well, I, I, you know, I, I certainly feel that we've done something tonight we haven't done in a long time. Spent a lot of the night talking about Donald Trump. Yeah, that's which is kind of unusual. So uh, thanks to you guys for being here. Uh, a pox on everybody else who didn't show up tonight. Are you going to uh, be here tomorrow? Alex? No, no. We're taking the night oh. off tomorrow. Oh. Night off? Okay. Yeah, and uh, th uh, thank you, Alan. And thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Fourth of July. John Larkin. And thank you, Kevin. It's been it's happy been really to my it's, wife on the Fourth of July. She's there very you go. happy birthday to your wife. Kevin. Oh, really? Is it, it's your anniversary? No, my wife's oh, birthday is on the Oh, your wife's tonight. birthday. Okay. Wish her happy birthday for me. She's a firecracker. Yeah. It, it's, it, <laughs> and, and, More ways and, than one. And extremely <laughs> tolerant. Anyway, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Weren't they wonderful? I like them. We had a good little discussion going here. Calm and easy. 
Hopefully we'll get more people back again next week after the holiday is over with. Uh, but to work, that's why we're taking tomorrow night off, because I think there will even be less people here tomorrow night than we're here tonight. Uh, but uh, stay tuned now for Jack Bishop. He's next with The Intersection. Uh, he'll be taking calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again on Monday for our uh, pop-up show, and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, get a vaccination if you haven't gotten one already, okay? Bye. Bye.